Hey everybody, Andy Sachs here with Coldwell Banker and the Around Town team, and we're going to jump right into our next installment of our video slash podcast blog. We've been doing this in some way, shape, or form for the past, gosh, six or seven years, and it's more one of the fun things that we do. We get to come at you guys in a very raw, transparent fashion that just... That just relays the information, the things we think you need to know about the real estate market, about selling, about buying, about the trends we're looking at. And today we're going to talk about five seller myths. Now this discussion today comes straight from you. I'm, I'm cherry picking this from Inman. Inman is a fantastic source for all things real estate. Whether you're a realtor or a consumer, check it out. These guys, I mean, top, some of the top researchers in the industry, some of the best stories in the industry, and I don't normally take... Um, or, or discuss things from other publications that we look at. It's kind of things that we've experienced in the field, but I thought this was a good one because we're running into a lot of these myths on the seller side day in and day out, and I thought it was uh, apropos to discuss. Uh, so we're gonna jump right into the five seller myths. And the first one, I don't have to have a listing agent visit my home until it's ready. And if you're just listening in your car, I'm doing air quotes. Obviously you're seeing them on the video. Man, I, I couldn't tell you how wrong that is. Preparation is key. We work with our clients sometimes, not just months, but years in advance. I have clients that we're gonna be working with in 2020 who engaged me in 2017 saying, Andy, my last child graduates college in 2020 and that's where we're gonna look to list the home. What kind of things can we do now? Or just as a heads up. So best thing we do, we go in months in advance typically. If, if time is allowed, sometimes it's obviously, listen guys, uh, it's a moving target and oftentimes it's, Andy, I gotta get this listed in a week. So we do as much prep as we can obviously within a week, but if we have more time, the better. More time to study the market, more time to prepare the house. We have a wonderful, talented stager on our team who comes out as part of our service and she gives you a to-do list in every room. You get a basic um, yet in-depth review of your home. And we, we take the guesswork out of it for you because if you've ever sold a home, you're running around from room to room wanting, wondering where to put things, what to paint, what to do, what to spend money, what not to spend money on most importantly, um, and, and trying to get the home ready and it always takes longer. So we try to take the guesswork out. So our stager, Tori is her name, will come in, we'll give you a room by room audit, what to do, what not to do, and just take the guesswork out of it. We don't want to spend undue funds. Um, we want to spend money that we'll either make money on or break even on, but most importantly, that will help sell the home faster. So the next myth, I don't need to upgrade the property for sale. And that rolls and dovetails nicely what we just spoke about. I'm going to read this part. Since increasing numbers of buyers are looking for move-in ready homes, the more a seller does to get the home to that level, the higher the returns. Today's buyers, folks, are fundamentally different than they were a decade, two decades, three decades ago. Today's buyers either don't have the expendable cash to do the needed upgrades, today's buyers don't have the patience, but more importantly, today's buyers don't wanna be caught on the weekends doing those upgrades. They're experiential clients. They wanna be out loving their home, out in the yard or taking trips. They're not gonna spend the funds day in and day out and the time day in and day out to upgrade their homes. So take some of those money some of those monies and get the home ready smartly. And that's something that we help with and our stager helps with as well. You should see a return on that investment. Next one, I need open houses to sell my home. Now this one goes both ways. Depending on the price point and depending on the style of the home, open houses are still a wonderful way to sell a property. But buyers already know about your home before they're coming to the open house. So imagine a couple decades ago or even 10 years ago, really before all the internet took hold in how we search for homes, a buyer would see a sign, they'd follow another sign and another sign, and another sign, they'd come to your home. And that might be the first time they've ever stepped inside your home. Now, when they come to your home, whether it be with their agent or an open house, it is a validation of what they've seen online. And they need to walk in and say, yep, this is exactly what I experienced online through the virtual tour, through the pictures, what I read in the write-up, and it's gotta be a validation. And if those things are not aligned, the pictures and in person, the same emotional feel and same valuation of that buyer isn't aligned when they come into the house, we've lost them. So the open house and visits from, from buyers and agents, in my opinion, are now validation, not necessarily introduction. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if it doesn't. We're gonna flip the page here, and the next one, I love this. And, and, and we're gonna talk a little bit more open houses here. I need many open house signs at multiple key intersections to draw people in. 
Let's pull the cover back on open houses here. And I had this discussion with most of my clients. An open house very well might give you grant more exposure, more some more print media, some more online media to advertise your home. But it really is, again, that validation. Or it's to capture buyers who in the sales cycle, oftentimes, not all the time, are early on in the bell curve of buying. So if you imagine a bell curve and they're the top of the bell curve, that's when they're ready. Oftentimes those folks coming to open houses are at the bottom front part of the bell curve. And they're just not ready, they're doing research. They're six months out. They're looking at your home to compare it to their home. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's important buyer to come in because oftentimes they say, wow, we didn't think we were ready, but maybe we are ready and it's great exposure. Now, how do we get them there? The old tried and true way was 20 plus signs all over town, directions, arrows, pointing people to come to this great open house and see this wonderful property. But now there's a thing called GPS, guys. And those open house signs, truthfully, are great advertising for me and my team. It's just 20 billboards out there in the streets leading you to see us, which we personally love. We'd love to see you. But at the end of the day, you don't need as many as you used to to get them to the house. It really is online driven. And of course, GPS can take you anywhere. The final myth that Iman wrote about, if buyers really want my house, they'll pay more than the market value. Or another way of saying this is, if buyers really want my house, they'll make an offer, we'll negotiate. Now that comes down to pricing. And in our market, and the markets don't hold true everywhere, right? In our market, it really does come down to pricing and marketing. And if the value isn't there in a buyer's eyes who has access to more information and past data than ever before, they're not gonna make an offer. They might believe that they are too far apart and they don't want to insult the seller. So you need to be within striking distance to get that offer. People won't blatantly just make a lowball offer or make an offer. Now again, like everything we say, nothing's as hard true um, as we'd like it to be. Uh, there are exceptions. There is, of course, the emotional clause in all of that where someone might fall in, in love with your home on an emotional level for whatever reason and make an offer. Um, that, that you would accept that might be a little bit higher than market value. Um, but at the end of the day, price is really, really important. And how you derive that price with your realtor is really, really important. And it's really a transparent conversation. And it's not a conversation that the realtor owns wholly. Um, you know your home better than I will ever know your home. And it's really important to, to understand that and to always be educating us on the key features of your property. Uh, we want to be engaged. We want you to be engaged in the process. It only helps with pricing. It only helps with garnering an offer that you'd be happy with. So those are the five myths as reported by Inman with my own little flair to them. If you guys have any questions about this, give me a call. My name is Andy Sachs with Coldwell Banker and the Around Town team, and we look forward to working with you soon.